Oh, I'm not even going to try and get through Unbearable Weight. No, oh, come on. I want to talk about yeah. that. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's a fun yeah. film. It's, come on. I'll break up. It looks and sounds great. Yeah. And Tom's going to tell you about the movie and about uh, the deleted scene that makes it a better movie. There, your turn. Oh, Ooh, I'm sorry, Kaz. I, I don't know anything about the deleted scene that makes it a better movie, <laughs> oh. except for the fact that it is, it is um, more cage versus cage, which is always fun. Um, uh, I guess we'll talk about it briefly. That Just that um, unbearable weight of massive talent is is out on 4K and it is not as fun of a movie as it should be, which mm. is like the consensus. I I don't know anyone who's seen it who who doesn't think that. Like it it's a, a good idea and the script is fun and Pedro Pascal is great in it. Like real and there are some really sweet scenes between um Pedro Pascal's character Javi and uh, Nicholas Cage, Javi is a super fan, and Nicholas Cage as Nick Cage, and and those bits of the movie are the the best part about it, where it, it is just somebody telling Nick Cage that they are a huge fan and what they like about his films, and Nick Cage just agreeing with them, and it's nice. it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, but it's just not. It's not as inventive. It's not as weird. Uh, it's not as like off the hook as it absolutely should be. Um, mm. I, I'm pretty sure Kaz agreed with this in his um, 4K review. And I said this in my uh, review when I saw it at the cinema, is that a, a movie about Nicolas Cage's career needs to be about like, the weird breadth of Nicolas Cage's career and the unbearable weight of massive talent focuses solely on his like nineties action and how cheesy and fun and bonkers those movies were and how everybody loves them like the rock and con air. And it really plays on that stuff. And, and, and that's super fun. But I think one of the things I said when I wrote about it was like, there are no jokes about like, Bangkok dangerous or drive angry in there. It's like what what I wanted to see was something that that really appreciated the the insane breadth of Nicolas Cage's uh like hundred movies. Yeah, oeuvre, should we call it? <laughs> and there's because because there are oblique references to stuff like adaptation in there. So clearly the the writers of this movie are huge Nicolas Cage fans, but they seem to have written it for, like, I don't want to say the lowest common denominator, but like the the most recognizable Nick Cage stuff. And I wish, I wish they'd gone more obscure and more weird and more stupid, um, because that when they do, that's the best bit of the movie. Um, the the safer bits of the movie are just kind of like an okay crime caper, like the, the, an enjoyable, but not particularly groundbreaking crime movie. And we, we needed a Nick Cage multiverse movie. That's what we needed. Get the Daniels is in from uh, everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> that's, that's what we should have had. Yeah. I want to oh. see Spider-Man noir facing off <laughs> <laughs> a, against just, just anyone, just anyone from Nick Cage's career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it it should have been stranger than it was. Because if you think about the people who are like following Nick Cage's career now, these are the people who are watching stuff like The Color Out of Space and Mandy and, and Pig. Yeah, and Pig and that stuff. Like people who loved Nick Cage in the 90s have probably stopped, mostly stopped watching his stuff mm -hmm. because it's gone so weird. Um, and like, yeah, I, 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 I just wish it had lent into more, more into that like Cage fandom, um, which of which I am definitely a part of. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, it is a fun movie, right? It's a fun it movie. Is. It is, yeah. Just no vampire, full cage. No vampire's kiss reference, no sale. Yeah, right. 
No vampire skin. <laughs> doesn't, he doesn't even eat a cockroach. Come on. Come on, Nick. <laughs> what are you doing? Um... <laughs> Right. But yeah. Oh, hey, hey. Uh, I like yeah, uh, Daniel yeah. on the chat just mentioned mentioned uh, prisoners of the ghost land. No, no mentions yeah. of prisoners. <laughs> That's maybe for the best. Like, it's, <laughs> it's not a very good movie. <laughs> but you've asked for them to reference Drive Angry for Christ's sake. Come on. Yeah. Do, you know, do you want to know a fact about um, Drive Angry? Uh, no. Is that... So <laughs> I really don't. Nicholas Cage only agreed to make Drive Angry if he could be shot in the eye in the first half hour. <laughs> what? <laughs> so that is why he is shot in the eye at the beginning of Drive Angry and goes around with a shot in the eye face for the rest of the movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we've missed you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs>